In this presentation, we discuss the location of zeros for a polynomial. In an earlier lecture, we completely factored a fifth degree polynomial, discovering along the way some upper and lower bounds for the roots of the polynomial. Let's summarize what we learned about the upper and lower bounds for our set of real zeros. If, upon doing synthetic division with a positive number c, the bottom row in our computation of f of c consists of all positive numbers, then that c is an upper bound for the zeros of f of x. We should not look further to the right on the x-axis for other zeros. For the purpose of this result, you can always treat zero as a positive number. If, upon doing synthetic division with a negative value c, the bottom row in our computation consists of numbers alternating in sign, plus, minus, plus, minus, and so on, then c is a lower bound for the zeros of f of x. We should not look for other zeros further to the left of c on the number line. For the purposes of this result, any time we run into a zero, we can treat it as a positive or negative value um, as convenient, helping us um, have an alternating pattern. We have one more guide in our search for roots of a polynomial. It's a rule which is four centuries old, discovered by René Descartes. Here's Descartes' rule assigned, the positive version. List the coefficients of a polynomial f of x from leading coefficient to the constant term. Count the changes of sign. This is an upper bound on the number of positive roots. The true number of positive roots may vary from this upper bound by a multiple of two since complex numbers come in conjugate pairs. For example, the polynomial x cubed minus 8 has coefficients 1, 0, 0, minus 8. Ignore the zeros. There's one change in sign from 1, positive 1, to minus 8. So this polynomial has one positive root. The polynomial 2x to the fifth minus 3x to the fourth plus 14x cubed plus 15x squared minus 34x minus 30, studied earlier, has coefficients 2, minus 3, 14, 15, minus 34, minus 30. This changes sign three times, from 2 to minus 3, positive and negative, and then from minus 3 to 14, negative back to positive, and then um, from 15 to minus 34. So an upper bound for the number of positive roots of f of x is 3. It changed sign three times. So this polynomial either has three positive roots or it's possible there are two complex ones that come in conjugate pairs, so maybe there's just one positive root. As we saw in our earlier work, there were a pair of complex conjugate and then one positive root. A second version of Descartes' rule of signs is, given the polynomial f of x, list the coefficients of f of minus x. Notice that we're plugging in minus x, just like we did when we tried to decide if a polynomial was even or odd. So the leading coefficients, um, let's consider the leading coefficient to the constant term and count the change of signs. This is an upper bound on the number of negative roots. If we plug in minus x and count the um, changes of signs, that will be an upper bound for the negative roots. The true number of negative roots may vary from this by some multiple of 2 because complex numbers come in pairs. So for example, let's look at this polynomial again. Um, x cubed minus 8. If I plug in minus x, I get minus x cubed minus 8. That has coefficients minus 1, 0, 0, minus 8. If I ignore the zeros, there's no change of sign. We had minus 1, we had minus 8. No change of sign. So there are no negative roots. Consider the polynomial, the fifth degree one we did before. If I plug in minus x, I get this one. And it has coefficients minus 2, minus 3, minus 14. Then 15, 34, we've changed sign there. Then minus 30, we've changed sign again. It has two changes in sign. An upper bound for the number of negative roots is 2. So the polynomial either has two negative roots or possibly two disappearing pairs. So maybe it has no negative roots. It has two or zero negative roots. As we saw earlier, minus 1 happened to be a root twice. Descartes' rule of signs narrows our search for roots of a polynomial. Earlier, we searched for roots of x cubed minus 8, and Descartes' rule of signs said it had one positive real root. If we know, we were told it had one positive real root, and we discovered it had no negative real roots, 
If we expect three roots from this polynomial, then we know that the other two roots must come in complex conjugate pairs. So Descartes' rule of sign tells us pretty much everything we need to know about this polynomial. It has one positive root, no negative ones, and two complex ones. After the earlier material on complex numbers, we're now able to state the fundamental theorem of algebra precisely. The fundamental theorem of algebra says that if you're given a polynomial f of x of degree n with real coefficients a sub i, a sub j, and so on, it has exactly n zeros if we include complex numbers and if we also count multiplicity. And complex solutions come in conjugate pairs. Since a zero, x equals c of a polynomial, gives a factor, x minus c of the polynomial, we can restate this theorem in terms of factors. The fundamental theorem of algebra in terms of factors says that if we're giving a polynomial degree n with real coefficients, it factors completely into n linear terms if we allow factoring involving complex numbers. In the next lecture, we explore rational functions.